So hey guys and welcome to another episode of Artificial Intelligence for Everyone. So in this episode we're going to be talking about the Perceptron, which was one of the first biological inspired computational units used in uh, programming and artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we're going to see how this very Perceptron works and how it has inspired further development in artificial neural networks. So without further ado, let's get going. So hi guys and welcome to this episode about the Perceptron. So basically the Perceptron is the basis for what we did back in the days when we started with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And I think it's a really good thing to understand where it comes from. And then we build up from there and talk about the artificial neural networks and the more advanced methods, if you so will, that all based from the Perceptron initially. So we'll start with a formal description as always, and then we'll go into the details from there. So the formal description goes, the Perceptron is an algorithm for supervised learning of binary classifiers. It is a type of linear classifier, that is, a classification algorithm, that makes its predictions based on linear predictor functions, combining a set of weights with a feature vector. So we talked about supervised learning before, and a binary classifier is simply a classifier, an algorithm that returns either 0 or 1, so true or false. And today, well, we're going to be focused about the perception and basically the linear classifier and the linear prediction function and what it actually means. So we're going to draw a bit and put it on a graph so it's uh, super easy to understand. First, a bit of history. So the perception was invented in 1957 and it really revolutionized how we used machine learning and artificial intelligence. So it was really popular until someone released a paper in 1969 improving, well, the... Uh, Perceptron can't be used to learn an XOR function. I'll show you what that means. Um, people were like, oh, so that's not really as powerful as we thought it, thought it was. Uh, so then it, the machine learning and AI and deep learning really had a like, big downfall from that. And well, just in the recent years, deep learning and, and the, all these aspects of using this kind of algorithms really shoot up. Uh, with stronger GPUs and better uh, functions that you can use to learn the algorithms and so on. But we'll talk more about that later in this video and the other videos coming as well. But I'm going to show you first what is a linear uh, classifier and what is the XOR function that it couldn't solve and why was that bad. So we'll I swoop myself to the side and I'll put the iPad screen up here and I'll draw some for you. So let's make a graph here. A two-dimensional graph. So we have uh, x and y. So then if we put up a set of points on this graph, we can uh, take uh, the green color here and we put some uh, dots here, which basically is just points in the graph with a specific x and y value. And then we put some points up here as well. So. Uh, a linear classifier simply is an algorithm that in this two-dimensional space is able to find a line that divides these two groups, you can say, these two different types of points. So you have two classes here, right? You have the green class and the red class. And we want to separate these on the graph using a line. So basically, a linear classifier just draws a line between these and says, well, I found a line that separates both of these and now I can just, uh, well, if it's on the right side of the line, it's this class and if it's on the left side, it's this class. So that's the basics of uh, what a Langier classifier means. So let's talk about the XOR problem and why it was a bad thing that this Perceptron couldn't solve the XOR problem. So let's draw another graph here. So now we have a red dot here, and we have a red dot here. And we have a green dot here, and we have a green dot here. And looking at this graph, we know that our perceptron can only do a linear, uh, a, a line in this graph and separate these, right? And, well, looking at this, it's not possible to do one line that separates these into two different groups, right? Because we wanted all of the points that, come, that would belong to the green group on one side of the line and all of the points that belong to the red group on the other side of the line. And I mean, if we do it like this, well, then it doesn't work. If, if we uh, put it like this, well, it doesn't work. 
And this was a big issue because people realized, whoa, there's problems that we can't solve here because if our problem isn't linearly separable, that is, yeah, separable with one line, then we can't solve this. And it, it began and people were talking really bad things, saying bad things about the, well, the perceptron and artificial neural networks for a long time. And, and the whole thinking there was, well, they aren't as powerful as we thought it was, because if the problem itself isn't linearly separable, then we can't use this kind of algorithm. So, it is a problem, but in the videos to come, we're going to talk about how you can solve this problem and how you can, uh, well, uh, un overcome this problem that we can't only divide things with one line and we can use multiple lines or take this two-dimensional space into more dimensions uh, and solve the problem there instead. But let's go on from here. So, the whole, in the earlier videos, we talked a bit about you have your input, and then you have some weights, and then you have some output, right? So I'm gonna go draw this up again for you who haven't watched that video, so you don't have to go and watch it again. Uh, but if you haven't watched it, I really recommend you to go and watch the supervised learning uh, video. But, so we have our perceptron here. This is our perceptron. And it gets two inputs, x and y. We have here x and y on our graph. So it has two inputs and it has one output and that is the the color is it green or is it red right so these two inputs that we have here they are connected to the perceptron here so basically they give their inputs to the perceptron the perceptron does some kind of calculation and then it returns an output and so as we described earlier, how we can think about this is that these are our inputs, right, as I said, and in machine learning, we always call our inputs for x. And it's a bit now when I use x and y up here, so I, I see it's not very intuitive, so let's rename these to uh, x1 and x2 instead. And that just means, well, the variable, uh, the first variable of x input and the second variable of our input x. So, so the input we have here to our perceptron is large x and it consists of x1 and x2. And somehow we want to connect these inputs we have here to the perceptron and we have to weight them somehow. Because if we always use the same learning, the uh, same uh, weights, it's really hard to actually learn anything, right? Because we want our algorithm to every time it trains uh, to get better at, at doing this line. So, uh, for example, if we look at the graph up here, maybe the first guess would be, oh, this is a line, then it checks, whoa, no, that's not really linear separable. Then we will change the weights connecting the input to the perceptron. Uh, to readjust our line a bit. So the second time it, it trains, the second iteration, the second epoch when it checked was I correct or was I wrong? Can I do any adjustments to get this line better? So uh, I have more uh, points on this graph that are classified correctly. Maybe then it does a line that, that looks something like this and it's like, oh well this is better. And then it will do a line that's like this and I say, oh well now both uh, they're all classified correctly now. So that's all about learning the weights. And I'll show you now what I mean with learning the weights. So we had the inputs here, the X, and it's connected to our perceptron like this, every input to, to the perceptron. And, and what the weight is, is what we multiply X with. So X, what we multiply X1 with to the perceptron and what we multiply X2 with to the perceptron. So in this case, we have two inputs and two weights. So every input gets its own weight. And what we do then is we multiply the input with its corresponding weight, and we multiply the other input with its corresponding weight, and then we give it to the perceptron, and the per perceptron gets the total value of this, and then it updates, uh, or the, and then it outputs something. So let's talk about the algorithm it uses, or the calculation it does for actually calculating its output. So the algorithm we use is w times x plus b, if that is 
larger than zero, we output a one, otherwise we output a zero. And what does this mean? Well, we have our weights here that we talked about. That, oh, no, that we have our input here that we multiply with our weights. And then the perceptron does something, and then it outputs something. So let me explain for you how this works, like plotting it out on the graph. I'm not going to go into much detail here on exactly how it works with the math, with the linear algebra. So I'm just going to explain it broadly and you'll have to take my words for this. But I'll just explain briefly now how this would look in a graph as well. So W times X would give you a line on the graph here. And the plus B is a bias value that says how far from, uh, actually the origin, uh, how far from here are we supposed to be? Is the line supposed to be there or is the line supposed to be this far away? And it's just an adjustment to, uh, to put the graph somewhere uh, from the origin up to one direction in this graph. And Looking at this, now we can easily classify points, because if we have a point uh, x or our input vector x and we multiply it with our weights and we take the plus b, if it's larger than zero, then it's on this side of the line. If it's lower than zero, then it's on the this side of the line. So then we know how we can classify these and that's how the algorithm works. But running this the first time will probably be really wrong about uh, which uh, where the line should be because we initialize our weights with a random set of values first So we don't make any uh, like pre-assumptions about how large the weight should be we just take a random number uh, Usually between minus one and one and we say well these are the weights for the input values We'll see how that works, but then the training goes on. So how does the training work? Well, I'm gonna remove this and so this goes back to the supervised learning part. So during training, we will have to have a set of input values and a corresponding label. So this is supervised training. So as again, I'm not gonna explain supervised learning now too much because I have another video with that. So yeah, if you don't know what the label is, please go back and check that video. But we will have an input vector and we will have the output value. So during the training, we know which output is correct for that feature vector, right? For the input vector we get. So then we can check, well, now I took this input vector x and uh, the feature vector and I multiplied it with my weights and it said that it should be zero, but I know it's supposed to be one. So then we know we have to make adjustments. And that's what the learning is all about. That's how we learn how this line up here should be in our graph to actually classify points as good as possible. So we need this set of uh, training data that we can use to learn where on this graph the line should be. And how we do this briefly is we up update these weights w uh, and these are weight one, weight two, if you didn't uh, see that they were uh, unique for every input. We take this input, this weight vector here and we will up, up, update it every time. So every time we do a training run on the training data we have, where we have the, the feature vector with the co correct the corresponding label, then we update the weights a bit to uh, adjust it to be more and more correct. And how we do that briefly is that we have the, we know the desired uh, y, the output y, and we have the correct y, um, uh, oh no, we, and we have the um, the output y. So we have the decide y that we know this corresponding feature vector should have, and we know what our algorithm output the output y. Then we can look at the difference between these, and then we can use well if it was negative and it should be positive then we can adjust our line a bit like this and if it was the opposite when we can adjust it a bit like this and then we do this over and over and over so yes this was briefly about uh, the perceptron and some problems with this is that well if this data isn't linearly separable as we saw with the extra problem then we can't use this algorithm 
So that's what we're going to talk about in the later episode as well, how you can actually solve non-linearly separable problems. So if you like this video and want to learn more about machine learning and artificial intelligence, stay tuned for the upcoming videos because I'm really keen to teach you the basics in artificial intelligence and machine learning and I want everyone to understand this. And if you have any feedback or suggestions on anything you want me to talk about, I gladly do so. So please drop those comments down below here and I'll make sure to look at them as soon as possible and hopefully I can make an episode on what you want as well. So as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon again.